Hello and welcome to another video with me, Christian Rauchenwald. In today's video, we are going to take a look at dollar cost averaging and how it can help improve your short and medium term returns, especially in volatile markets. However, before we get to that, as always, let's get the usual disclaimer out of the way first. Everything that I share in this video is my personal opinion and in no way financial or professional advice of any kind. You should always do your own research, consult certified professionals, draw your own conclusions and make your own decisions. Everyone that invested money in stocks, crypto or other assets knows the days, weeks or sometimes months where all they can do is watch their portfolio decline in value. Some of us are better at shrugging off the doubt that usually arises in those times while we watch our hard earned money lose in value instead of watching watching it grow, but we probably all can't wait to see the value at least break even again and dollar cost averaging is a way to potentially reach that break even point faster. In other words, dollar cost averaging is a way for you as an investor to suffer less through short term volatility. The way it works is quite simple, instead of throwing all your money into one asset at once, you instead split it up in as many tranches as you like and invest them in equal intervals. For example, instead of investing 10,000 US dollars at once into one stock, you instead invest $1,000 every month for a period of 10 months. Sure, if that stock's price soars just after you made the first investment, you'd miss out on some gains on your remaining $9,000, but more often than not, you won't know for sure if that's going to happen. And then investing in tranches allows you to also buy some shares during dips to receive overall more shares in total. To illustrate this better, we can look at the following graphic. Here you can see on top a one-time $8,000 investment into an asset that costs $10 per unit, getting the investor 800 units in total. Compared to that, in the bottom half you can see another investor that instead invests the entire amount in equal tranches of $1,000 over a period of 8 months. The second investor receives 100 units at $10 per unit in January, around 71.5 units in February at $14 per unit, around 111 units in March at $9 per unit, around 74 units in April at $13.5 per unit, 125 units at $8 per unit in May, around 117.5 units at $8.5 per unit in June, around 133 units at $7.5 per unit in July, and finally again 100 units at $10 per unit in August. So overall, while the price of this fictional asset broke even over 8 months, investor A still has 800 units worth exactly the $8,000 he initially invested, while investor B has a total of roughly 830 units worth $8,300 and is actually looking at a small profit. Dollar cost averaging in this case was the better decision because it reduced the average buy-in price for the second investor. And while that is great, dollar cost averaging doesn't work in all situations or at least not that well. Let's assume you already invested $100,000 into some asset and now you want to dollar cost average. In this case, your additional investments would need to be sufficiently big to actually have a noticeable impact on your overall performance. If you just add $100 every month, it won't do much. But on the other hand, not everyone can afford to add another $1,000, $5,000 or even $10,000 per month to their portfolio to actually have that impact. Still, dollar cost averaging is one of the fundamentals new investors should know about and understand to reduce the potential impact of bad decisions during the first couple of months or years as an investor. And it also works if you are, for example, copying portfolios of other investors like mine on platforms like eBay. Tower. There, instead of using one big lump sum to copy a portfolio you believe might perform well in the future, starting smaller and adding funds to your copy over a period of 6 to 12 months reduces the impact of short-term variance and also protects at least some of your capital from going down the drain if the investor you're copying suddenly doesn't perform that well anymore. Taking my portfolio at eToro for example with a return of 24.33% year to date at the time of recording this video, you can see that while I had months with more than 10% in profit, I also suffered my biggest loss this year with a drawdown of almost 14% in July. Users that copied me at the end of June with all their available money now sadly have to wait until I recover that entire loss, while those that add $200 or more every month to their copy actually take advantage of dollar cost averaging and will reach their break even point and after that profit sooner. 
Now that's obviously assuming that I'm able to recover the entire loss and while I'm confident that I will be able to do that by the end of the year, it is also important to point out that I cannot guarantee any returns. Anyways, with all of that, you should now understand why and when dollar cost averaging makes sense, especially when you're looking at investments that come with some volatility. If you have any questions about dollar cost averaging, you can obviously leave them in the comments down below or follow the link in the video description down below to check out my portfolio on eToro and leave a comment on any of my recent posts there. Thanks for watching. See you in one of my other videos. Till then, bye bye.